How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel for another Star Wars gaming news update video. Now you guys have been loving these news roundup formatted videos so we're continuing on with that today. Now I did want to keep consistent with the weekly news videos but there was a really slow news week the other week so I thought I'd wait an additional week for some news and we have quite a bit to get to today because of that. So this is technically now a bi-weekly news update video. So today we have a lot of new details to go over on Star Wars Squadrons, as well as some news for LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga on some pre-order bonuses and updates on the game's release date, as well as potentially a gameplay reveal. And we of course have a few updates on Battlefront 2, which we will get to throughout this video as well. Now if you guys want to be kept up to date on all things Star Wars gaming with news update videos, then be sure to subscribe to the channel with that notification bell on so you don't miss a thing. News for Star Wars games is going to be ramping up in the coming weeks and months, so you definitely do not want to miss a thing, and this can be your one-stop shop for all of the news, so be sure to stick around. But now let's just dive on into this video, and starting it off with the Star Wars Squadrons news, as there is a lot to get to today. So Jay and of course Ian Frazier, the creative director for Star Wars Squadrons, have both been revealing snippets of details regarding Squadrons over the past couple weeks. And there are a lot of new details to unfold, the first of which is regarding the story mode and how you will customise your pilot. In the Squadrons gameplay reveal trailer there was a menu screen that showed a Rebel and Imperial pilot. Now there were two names in that trailer on that screen, those being Case Cassandra and Rao Highmoon. Now I originally thought these names would stick, but we have confirmation that we can actually change these names as we please. Now this was posted a couple weeks ago, but it kind of flew under the radar, pun intended. Jay went on to say, remember in the gameplay trailer when it showed two names, those are auto-generated, but you can change them. So that is confirmation that we can change the name to whatever we want, so you can get nice and creative, obviously within reason, of course. So you can make your pilot unique to you, which is something that I know a lot of people are going to appreciate. I did see a lot of people kind of get a little bit mad that they didn't get to customize their own Jedi in Fallen Order and that it was just a set character. But it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case this time around for Squadrons, so this is going to please a lot of people. Now, we also got some details on how the campaign is going to start and where it's going to start, and it's actually very, very interesting. So Ian Frazier had an interview with Polygon where he went into depth on what the game is going to entail, and one thing that stuck out like a sore thumb was this. He went on to say, we actually start with a prologue, so when the game kicks off, it's set right after the Death Star has blown up Alderaan. Then of course he goes on further to elaborate why he was giving out that kind of information before the game's release, and it makes sense, he wants to avoid confusion and to let people know that it wasn't a mistake. And this is also interesting, he goes on further to say, and after the prologue is over, now we say, okay, do you want to keep going with the story? Do you want to check out PvP? We sort of open up the game to you and that's the big time jump. As soon as that little prologue is over, now you're in the meat of the game, which is all post Endor. So this is actually really cool as the game sort of looks like it's going to warm you into it before jumping into PvP. I was actually under the impression that you had to complete the single player story before jumping into multiplayer, but it seems like you just have to do the prologue and then you can just do whatever you want. So for all of those PvP gremlins out there, that is good news for you. Now also, more news for Squadrons. There was a confirmation that Squadrons will support HOTAS, which for those who do not know is hands-on throttle and stick. There was a bit of confusion regarding whether or not this game was going to support that alongside VR as well, and Ian confirmed a couple days ago that it will. So between HOTAS and a VR, this game is going to be crazy immersive. And also, there is a lot of talk about the customization for Squadrons as well. We saw in the gameplay reveal trailer that there would be cosmetics in the cockpit. We saw that little Ewok, as well as some ship customization. That honestly looks like it's going to get really funky. Now, having said that, all of this customization has been designed to fit within Star Wars, but it was confirmed that there is going to be an option which you can choose if you wish. 
Now this option allows it so you don't see any of these customization options in game on the other player's ships. So as a result of that, you can have the full hardcore realistic experience that the game is going to provide. So you don't get like unimmersed by a weird looking player customized TIE fighter. So they have respected that some people want the experience to be just like it is in the films. So to anyone who thought the customization might be a little bit goofy or over the top, you don't need to be worrying about that at all. Now finally for Squadrons news, it was confirmed that Squadrons will have an offline mode that allows players who don't have access to the internet or just have complete potato internet to enjoy the game 100% offline. So that's more of a minor detail and I was actually going to leave it out of this video, but I see a lot of comments, you know, over the weeks and months regarding offline play, so I thought I'd throw that in here just for you guys. So that mostly does it for the Squadrons news. There are other tiny trickles of news regarding Squadrons, but honestly, nothing worth boring you guys over. The stuff we talked over was the main stuff that's come out over the past two weeks since the last news update video. But now let's jump into some news and updates regarding Battlefront 2. Now from all accounts, there has been some sort of a problem regarding the Celebration Edition of Battlefront 2. Now I have seen a few people comment this on my videos over the past, I'd say about past month. But I never really thought much of it to be perfectly honest, but it actually turns out that people have actually been complaining about this over on the Battlefront 2 subreddit. And old community manager Ben Walk did actually respond surprisingly on this. The Reddit user went on to say, and this is quite long but bear with me, I'm on PC and I purchased the Celebration Edition upgrade on Origin a while back shortly after it was released. As expected, all skins were unlocked, however, when I launched the game today, all the skins that I had unlocked through purchasing the Celebration Edition were now locked. The skins that I had bought using credits were still there. I checked Origin and it states that I have purchased a Celebration Edition upgrade and the base game. I also use cosmetic mods, not sure if that changes anything. And Ben replied to this saying, working on a fix for this now, sorry about that. Now this was roughly a week ago and to my knowledge, I think it's still a bug that people are experiencing. So maybe it's actually not fixed yet. So if any of you guys have been experiencing this issue still, then be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. But one of the reasons that I felt the need to bring this up as it goes to show that DICE haven't 100% been pulled off of Battlefront 2 only about 99.99%. So maybe there is actually hope of getting a bug fix here or there for Battlefront 2, as let's be brutally honest here, the game is not in a good state with its gameplay at all. I was live streaming yesterday on the channel and I encountered gameplay that made my blood boil. Vehicle damage against heroes, it's still a joke. The lightsaber combat is a complete mess. Abilities aren't working, blocks aren't working. It's just a bit all over the place. So hopefully, if things turn to a somewhat normal state in Stockholm where DICE are located, then maybe we might get some fixes here or there, as man, Battlefront 2 really does need it. And I think it's actually worth noting that some of the developers have actually been going back into DICE at some point lately. Now, I don't think this is returning to work though, but it does show that things may be starting to lift in Stockholm. So hopefully they're back in their offices soon and maybe, just maybe, we can get some bug fixes. But now to wrap this news video up, let's finally touch on some news regarding LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Now it seems for the most part things have come to a screeching halt with this game. It's not really being marketed, but having said that, various new pre-order bonuses have been trickling out over the past few weeks. And all of it does hint to some of the minor content we will see in the game at some stage. Now, Xbox does have the marketing rights for this game, and there is an Xbox Games Showcase going on on the 23rd of July, so approximately 10 days from now. So there is a chance that we might see a trailer or maybe some gameplay around this time frame, as a trailer did get released for LEGO Star Wars at this very event last year. I'm not saying that it's going to happen, it's just a chance of happening because they really need to ramp up the marketing for this game. Even though it's a LEGO game, it looks like it's going to be huge and it's just not getting the marketing that it deserves. But I will keep you guys in the loop on this as time goes by. So for those of you who want to know what's going on with LEGO Star Wars, I got you covered.
But that is just about all of the news from the past two weeks. Like I said at the start of the video, I intended for this news update series to be, you know, weekly, but things moved pretty slow the last week and a bit, so I stretched it out to the past two weeks for a bi-weekly news update. Now, I don't think that'll be the case again. Things can only really ramp up from here, and I do expect that it's going to, so do expect much more from me on Star Wars gaming news in the coming weeks. But that is just about going to wrap it up for me in this video. Be sure to drop a like if you did enjoy it or found the video informative. And if you haven't already, then feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all things Star Wars gaming. And I will have some longer formatted videos coming in the next week and a bit. So make sure you keep an eye out for them as a lot of work has been going into those. But that's going to do it for me today. So thank you all for watching and have a good one.